Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Thomas, and today you join me with the 2023 Toyota Aigo X Undercover Edition. This car's got crazy chaos balance badges everywhere, a wild interior, coral red accents on the exterior, and I'm so excited to show you guys this car. So let's flip the camera around and I'll crack on with this video. So this is the front end of the Aigo X, which theoretically is an Aigo crossover, X for crossover. And this is the third generation of Igo. The first one came out in 2005. And what we can see here is this one's in this nice grey metallic paint. And we've got loads of features on this particular undercover trim because this is one of the highest specs Igos that you can get. So, of course, we've got things like adaptive cruise control, etc. that you can see all built into the radar up front. But the undercover trim adds things like this coral red splash at the front, which you'll see round to the sides as well. We've got it on the wheels and we've even got it on the interior. But I'll show you around the side of the door. On the sills, this coral red flashing all the way around here. And the wheels in this car are quite tall and skinny. I believe they're 18 inch. As you can see, super shiny, um, but skinny as well. Kind of reminds me of what you've seen on the BMW i3 back in the day, tall, skinny tyres. Now, the boot in this car is quite small, as you'd expect with a compact city car, or crossover even. We do have a deep inset in there, quite high lip, but it is big enough, you know, for duffel bags, maybe a suitcase going on a holiday, or your shopping. There's not really any storage underneath, you know, keeping stuff for some tools and stuff under there for maybe tyre repair kits, but not too much other than that. And there's no handle or anything to pull down so just put your fingers here and close now this is glass or kind of black gloss anyway so i don't yeah that's all glass so i don't want to put <laughs> massive fingerprints on here we've even got camera and sensors on this eye and i do like the fact we've got quite tall lights um kind of arcing back to the mark ii eye because uh, the first one had the cute wheel lights in here now this does not share its underpinnings with any Citroëns or Peugeot, unlike the first two. This is more in line with what you would see on a Toyota Yaris, but we do have a 1 litre free cylinder up front, similar to what I've seen in my Toyota IQ. Now this car is super fun. We've got a whole load of like two-tone paint going on. The interior here, we do have these little pop-out windows, which take you back like so. Pull them in don't have any drop-in cards or anything, we do have a handle and obviously a mechanical release and we do have these funky looking seats with the red and the grey. Now up front is where the things are exciting because it is an Igo, it is a small crossover so it's really just occasionally carrying people in the back. Now this is me inside the back of the Igo as you can see my knees are pretty much right up against the seat like this is in my driver's position headroom's actually not too bad and the head restraints can get pulled up a lot but if you want to make it a little bit more comfortable you know i'm just about squeezing back here but you're definitely noticing this is a smaller cabin but for sure the knees five foot eleven are going to struggle probably even getting two abreast back here as you can see with my knee kind of bouncing off the side of the knee there um so yeah definitely not one for families are carrying adults back here frequently um i'll flip the camera in so you can have a better look so this is just a real quick look so there's no map pockets behind the seats and yeah you'd expect this in a city car i guess but just wanted to show you what it's like back here um and they've not put too much in here do you know there's a little pop-out window like so so it's a little retro throwback to my childhood um, and sitting back here because the kind of the way the door goes down, there's not a lot of greenhouse back here, as you'd maybe think. Um, but the visibility out front's all right, so you can see straight ahead. So probably fine for young kids or maybe taking their friends, picking them up. But up front is where the magic is. But before you jump inside, you realise it says balance here and chaos on that side of the roof. Now that's just a teaser of what's to come. So we'll have a look inside, we do have this chaos balance on the actual floor mats itself. I go undercover here, and then the door card, yeah, it's some rubberized kind of metallic finishing up here, but this is all kind of plastic, electric windows up front, 
wing mirror control, door will be seen as the back, little bit, and then we do have a little bit of storage. It is the cheapest Toyota here you can buy, the Igo X in the UK at the moment, so please go with that in mind. It is, after all, we'll sitting below a Yaris, but this one does come with this undercover trim, which I think is really cool. I'm <laughs> just seeing this pattern, and they're quite comfortable seats that are manually adjustable. Same as the steering wheel, you can adjust that a little bit as well. I'm 5 foot 11 and I've got enough room inside for myself. Now, out with the funky seat pattern and the funky um, floor mats, we do have this coral red interior accents all throughout the cabin that just literally lift it up and add a little bit of fun and joy to your life. Um, we even have body coloured bits inside, which we've seen in other iGo models. Now, the advantage of Igo X is just across even, you're sitting a little bit taller than maybe the Mark II Igo, you know, so it's a little bit easier maybe potentially getting in and out. And you've got all the Toyota larger model mod cones on this undercover trim, so we've got things like your start-stop, we've got adaptive cruise control, we've got a little instrument display here, uh, keyless entry, keyless go, um, automatic lights, it goes on and on. We've even got air con in the car as well, which this has got a manual five speed, so clutch down, foot there, and that one litre three cylinder pops to life, as you can see, I go X. So we can change your fan speed on the right hand side, you can change your temperature there. It is one zone, but it's a small cabin, but it's very easy to control. And so there's the aforementioned air con. We've even got heated seats down here as well for left and right, USB A, 12 volt power outlet, and a wireless charging port, as well as two cup holders, the five speed manual, and we do have a glove box, which is very large considering the size of the car. Not softly damped and not lined with fuzzy stuff, but is large and ready to pounce. Plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder room, and great visibility out front. So this is my kind of A-pillar view here, side view mirror. So the car's quite short, so you can even turn your head and you can see round like so. Material quality, the steering wheel is just what you'd expect from a Toyota. You know, I would even say it feels above what a Yaris and my Igo should be because it's a nice material. It's definitely nicer than what I had in my IQ back in the day. Of course, the top of the dash is very scratchy, but it's the lowest end Toyota product, so please keep that in mind again. It's not soft or squidgy, but it does the job. And for many people, this is either going to be your first car or potentially your last car. Um, Worth mentioning, the Toyotas do come with a 10 year warranty, 100,000 miles from new, um, as long as you get that serviced each year at a Toyota dealership. So you could buy this, this is a 2023 particular one, it's going to have 9 years left on its warranty, um, 10,000 miles, so you've probably got, what, another 88,000 miles roughly of hassle-free driving ahead of you if you had this Igo X. This does always just me laugh, this button here you can see in other Toyota Lexus products, my LC has that. Some buttons here for your auto start stop, traction control, automatic lights. All in all, everything's easy to reach. And similar to what we've seen in the Corolla Cross, we do have physical buttons for features like your cruise control. If you want to change the little gauge in front of you there, even this is handy telling you 54.8 miles per gallon from that one litre. Um, and this screen in here is different to what we've seen in other two T Toyota products there. Uh, it's not like the CHR and Yaris. It's a slightly different system which allows you to do your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I guess if you were repairing your phone, you wouldn't have to worry about your cruise control, etc. But yeah, let's see it cancel. There we go. So up front, we do have a little screen, and then on the exterior, we have the speedo. And then the left hand side we have your tack, and then the right hand side there we have your fuel gauge. Now, I was trying to work this out, it looks like we've got about half a tank, so that's going to probably estimate a 200 mile range on this car. That little screen can get changed just by touching this little button in here. So we can cycle through things like there's your speed, radar cruise, your radio, truck computer, anything else. So there we go, there's other settings there, clock settings, brightness, whatever you want to do cycling through these two buttons here on the car. I'll probably just keep it on speedo because it's quite nice to have a digital readout and you don't always have to worry about looking at that there. Again, we're probably going to be looking at about 100 miles per hour top speed on this car. All right, we're driving the Igo Cross, a whole one litre three cylinder. It's under 100 horsepower, would you believe it or not, which may sound crazy in 2024 but it is not turbocharged or electrified in any way it's just an out and out one litre petrol engine 
which harks its roots back really to things like the previous iGOES, the Toyota iQ that I had was also a one litre three cylinder. So if you want to keep this car and you're worried about electrification or turbochargers, an actually aspirated vehicle may be the route for you if you're planning on keeping a car for a long time and worried about maintenance. You don't have to worry about turbos or change of batteries, anything like that. Um, and all, all the power does go through this 5 speed transmission and 0 to 60 is in about 14 seconds. Um, I do remember my iGO with its automatic transmission. I think it was a little bit slower, it was about something like 17 seconds. So I'm just puffing as a taxi doing a three point turn right at the entrance of this junction. So, we're just going to join uh, A Road and we're going to see what it's like putting the foot down. The truck's like that. Here we go, foot to the floor, second gear, thirty, thirty-eight. Come on, <laughs> forty-four. Truck's catching up. 50. There we go. And I think that will do. Um, it is a 60, but I don't want to risk it too much when I'm driving. I've been filming at the same time. So, acceleration is not the strong suit for the Igo Cross there. Um, it definitely is designed for cities, urban environments, and you know. It's going to be an ideal first car as well because the one that's going to help with insurance costs. And I always think this kind of car should be your first car or last car. So once you're at speed, it's all right. You know, sitting in the odometer there, we're getting about 54 minutes to a gallon at the moment, which considering this is a Y1 meter. Speaking from experience, my eye go, although was slow, I did manage about 55 to 57 minutes to a gallon in about the year I had that vehicle. Um, and I think this, this car is 110 grams per kilometre of CO2, but back in the day it didn't matter because I think that was 20 pound a year road tax, it would be exercise duty. Now it's really for cars under 40 grand or not for the first, say, five years. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. If you're buying this car because you want something smaller than a Yaris or Yaris Cross, you're wanting maybe a funky looking one, like definitely this undercover edition is going to appeal to a more youthful market or somebody young at heart just because it brings out the joy in me seeing chaos and balance on the roof, it's on the door, <laughs> door floor mats, um, it's definitely something very fun and it's got all the big car extras that you'd expect such as the heated seats, the keyless entry, keyless go, air conditioning um, and I'm just in a big car park now and I'm just going to sh show you one of the advantages of having a little Igo is we're able to park it quite easily. Um, I'm just going to go in that end space there beside the Fiesta. And I wouldn't try this in a car like the LC because that is very large and wide, but we've got a camera which is not the highest definition, but at least we've got one. Um, we do have parking sensors as well. Mirrors are all right, and because it's quite a small car, you can gauge it in the space, which I think small cars are so much fun in the UK market is definitely missing more and more small vehicles from its lineup and offerings for customers really. Um, because to an extent, I guess this competes with something like Kia Picanto, but because it's crossover size, you're maybe looking at Stonic or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it kind of sits in a class of its own because it's a one litre naturally aspirated small crossover. Um, and it's, this one's priced at, I'll tell you because I've got the little cheat sheet here, £16,995. Now this is a high spec, as I mentioned before, and it's a really funky one. But there are going to be models for various budgets. You know, this car's been out a couple of years now, and you know, the used market prices are all over. I'm not here to report on that, but I'm just letting you know, this undercover edition is just under £17,000. And for all, you're getting nine years left of warranty. All these gadgets, the fl f coral red flashes interior, undercover on the seats. But it's a really fun car and it's really brightened up my day. I wasn't expecting it to be this funky and fun. Um, and it's a great driving little car. So thank you so much for watching. Ciao.